Hello, my name is James Clem. I'm a proud CEREC owner, and you know it's a privilege to be able to convey my passion about CEREC and some of my tips to Club CEREC. I'd like to talk to you about the sequence of virtual design. I've mentioned before in my lectures and my teaching series at cadstar.org, which is where I have my curriculum online as well, called CEREC Liftoff, but the Clem Mojo within CEREC success is it's all about the optical impression and how you prepared before your optical impression. That's 80% of our success. So in other words, if we have a preparation and we're managing the margins and managing the reflective medium and taking the optical impression where you're not pitching and rolling over your preparation in combo with the buckle bite, it's the best of all worlds. Once you take it to your virtual design software, how do you make that work seamlessly for you? I don't spend a lot of time in the software. In fact, Sharona has made this software to work for us. Even though we have tools, if we are gathering the optical information properly, where we're not pitching and rolling, we're already setting up our insertion axis. So our main responsibility is to hit the green arrow and outline our margin and make sure our occlusion and our proximal strength is right, which we use by our extended color feature. Send it to the milling unit and it should drop in. I did several restorations this week. We did three Emaxes in three different zones on the same patient. I kid you not, they all dropped in. Some of the margins were way subgingival. We used our laser to expose those margins. I used contrast spray, which is one of these new reflective mediums in a can. It's more like a varnish, which allows me to capture a very clean, crisp margin. I make sure that my proximal contacts are prepared, so I'll do enamel plasty where I need to, to make sure the proximal contact is in the same alignment with the prep. That was almost a religious symbol. But that's important because if you have that down you don't have to pitch and roll your camera to get all the surfaces in that you need which would be your prep surface and your proximal contact surfaces. That's critical. Once you give that type of information to the computer you don't have a lot of work to do. Stay away from the tools guys. You know I mainly use the form tool and that's about it. We like to dink, or we can dink, and you know we sit there and often we overwork it, particularly with the biogenetic design. Shrona has set up the software to work for you and me. It should be fast. It shouldn't take us a long time to. Window one is correlating my buckle scan and quadrant relationship. Window two is I bypass trim. That's trimming the model, and I bypass trimming the opposing arch. My first responsibility after correlation is outlining my margins. Now here's another secret when you're outlining your margins. Since I don't trim my virtual die, hit control B on your keypad in your margin screen and then flip over your die. Underneath it looks like an impression that you would have taken with your traditional impression materials and you can precisely see your margins. So if you want to highlight or retrace any margins to just make them nice and clean, that's the best view for me that I use. Once you've outlined your margins, you hit the green arrow, your next screen is insertion axis. Now here's the secret. If you've prepared your case right and you've taken the proper angle of the optical impression, I don't usually change the insertion axis because the, the information was already entered into the computer in the proper angles. So I hit the green arrow again. That's when the biogeneric takes over. It gives me that proposal. Now I'm in what I call the restoration screen. There's three steps that I accomplish here. Number one, particularly if, a full, if it's a full crown, is I make sure the full crown fits the proper orientation to the quadrant. If it's a partial covered restoration, that's almost a dead given. It's, it's usually just positioned right. If it's a full crown, I want to make sure my curve of speed, my curve of Wilson is on. 
So the cusps fit the arch. In most cases, if you've taken the optical impression in the right angle because you prepped that way, it all works. Are you getting this? This is how Clem makes it simple in his clinical theater. First thing I'll do is make sure the restoration fits the arch. If I need to use any of my positioning tools, either movement or rotation, or make sure my closal plane is in, I do it at that time. That's in the restoration screen. Number two in the restoration screen is I check my proximal contacts to make sure my firmness is right, which is usually is because that's set and the proposals are relative to your proximal contact parameter. Now, in most cases, I increase the buccal lingual dimension of my inner proximal contact zone. I just prefer that. I use what I call the wax on and the wax off technique. So it's my form tool with the aperture, which is the amount of wax, virtual wax, that's applied at about the middle aperture open. I sweep it like a rainbow, so I'm waxing on over the contact. Then I go to my contact option feature and activate that command, which resets my firmness relative to my color system back to my parameters. Now in my computer, that's a light green on top of a light blue speckle. I know that's gonna drop in nine out of 10 times, particularly if I prepared my clinical teeth and proximal contacts right. So you do all your contacts. If it's a full crown, you do your mesial and your distal. Number three within your restoration screen is to set and finalize your occlusal contact strength. Now you'll find with the biogeneric, there's not a lot to do here because the biogeneric software, when you're using the buccal scan, you have the full opposing arch, the cusps will reach for the opposing arch and pretty much place those contacts where you want them. In other words, if I'm designing the upper cusp, it's gonna reach down to the lower fossa and also the marginal ridges. Now, my secret with my contact placements, which I do usually modify, is I want my contacts, two things here. I don't want them on inclined planes. In other words, I'm gonna want them on cusp tips, I want them on a landing pad in the fossa or on a marginal ridge. And number two is I want the contact size to be one square millimeter. As you see demonstrated right now, that's the look I'm going for. That type of refinement with the buccal scan is pretty close to shim stock accuracy for me. Now that's hot. So I'm pretty much done with my virtual design. You hit the green arrow, you're in your milling preview. I'm gonna check several things at this stage before I mill. Your control B is already on. So what you'll do is you'll go up to trim, double click trim that turns back on your virtual die without the blue line. You turn the die over and check your spacer. What you wanna do at this time is make sure you see no shine through of your spacer inside of the margins. If you see a shine through, that means it's not gonna see it all the way. You may not even see it. In most cases, my full crown spacer parameter is usually negative 20 to negative 40. So I'm just subtracting that from 100. So zero equals 100 microns of spacer. In my inlays, it's usually about negative 40 to negative 50. So you subtract that from 100. So that leaves me a spacer somewhere between 50 and 60 microns. The smoother your prep, the more ideal you can have with your spacer around 60 to 50 microns. Once you know that's on, then you Use the ceramic of your choice for the case, and you hit mill. That's my method. I don't use a lot of tools when we're gathering the information properly from the clinical theater because we've prepped in a way that we're engineering our preps to give us ideal mill ceramic. So that's the Clem module. That's the cateator concepts in the clinical theater. I hope that's been helpful to you. If you wanna know more about how I operate in the clinical theater, become a member of my CEREC Liftoff series. That's my online continuum. And when you're a member of that, you have a, a yearly access to the site. You'll get two of my courses for just a nominal fee. And in addition to that, you can always be involved with me in my uh, social networking center within CEREC Liftoff.
When we use proper imaging over ideal preps and proximal contact preparation, the software will work seamlessly for us so we don't have to use tricks to make the software work. We just use tips. And that's how we get seamless designs and seamless fits within the Seric Clinical Theater.